Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our fourth session of the Environmental Speaker Series, a collaboration between WWF Malaysia and our partners at the US Embassy in Kuala Lumpur. In today's session, we will explore a topic that has been in the news lately here in Sabah, and that is carbon. More specifically, can carbon mitigation reduce the impacts of climate change? Mitigation refers to actions that reduce emissions or increase removals of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. There was just recently a conference of the parties uh, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It was held in Glasgow, Scotland, and one of the things that took place there was the negotiation, finally, of rules to implement Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. Uh, this is something that had eluded uh, the negotiators at the two previous COPs in uh, Madrid, Spain, and, uh, and in Poland, 2018-2019. Two articles are particularly important in Article 6. Uh, one is 6.2, which addresses internationally transferred mitigation outcomes. This is a part of the Paris Agreement that applies uh, to countries. So a country may host a project to reduce emissions or improve, increase removals and transfer the benefits to another country. Article 6.4 complements that provision by allowing the crediting and trading of mitigation activities by public and private entities that are authorized by a party to the convention. Uh, the Paris Agreement ambitions to limit global warming to 1.5 to 2 degrees will not be met unless there is deep decarbonization among uh, the transportation sector, industry, uh, energy, and so on. Climate change, I'm sad to say, is happening. Today, the temperature rise from pre-industrial levels is 1.2 degrees Celsius. So we are 1.2 degrees hotter than we were before the Industrial Revolution. We are in this mess, ladies and gentlemen, due to the fact that during the industry, since the Industrial Revolution, we've been pumping up carbon into the atmosphere and it's been accumulating. It is, we are in this mess, not because of the pollutions of today or the pollution of tomorrow. It has been, it was created during the Industrial Revolution and mostly emitted by countries in the Northern Hemisphere. All predictions show that the highest sea level rise in Malaysia will be in Sabah, in the Northern and Eastern coast of Sabah. The best thing we can do for our children is not hope for them to solve our problems. That is the best thing. And I, every time I hear someone on stage tells me, you know, we're going to educate our children and hopefully they'll be able to solve this problem. That is rubbish. You are going to hand them a disaster that they can't avoid. By the time our children come of age, where they'll be in a position to solve things, your, our problem will be unsolvable. So this decade is a decade for action.